Remember what God did. Remember his call. Remember what he said. And I come and I teach it to you. So you'll, look at somebody and say, remember. remember. You'll remember. You'll remember. Because all the devil's got, the only power he really has is to make you forget. Make you forget and focus on what's going on. Look at somebody and say, don't forget. Don't forget what God did. Don't forget. So I thank God. Anyway, I had a great weekend. Look at somebody and say, defeated folk. That's who the devil is. Defeated foe. Checkmate on the devil. Amen. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash defeated foe dot P D F. The devil is the enemy of God, which makes him hate us. The devil is the enemy of God, right? Which makes him hate us. So the devil hates you because of God. For several reasons, but one of them is God's love for you. And not for him. Amen. The, the, the best depiction of this is Cain and Abel in the garden. I mean, you know, uh, after, the, after they were, ran out of the garden, actually. But Cain and Abel. Cain was upset because he felt God did not feel about him like he felt about his brother. But his brother was doing what God said. And God even told Cain, if you do what your brother's doing... And I like both of you. <laughs> Isn't that easy? Yeah. To just do right? Well, the devil can't do right. He can't get right for real. Yeah. He the real can't get right. <laughs> he can't do right. So because he can't do right, he hates us when we do right. right. He hates the righteousness that flows in our lives. Yeah. He hates our good decisions. Yeah. Our good choices. Yeah. He hates our prayer life. He hates our faith and confidence when things go bad to know that things will be good again. He hates that. He hates that. He don't care about how you look and your size and your, you know, your, your, he don't care about none of that. That's superficial. He hates righteousness. That's why every time you start acting right, wrong pops up. Because he wants you to stop doing right. John 8 and 44. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. Because he was a what? So he's basically calling Cain the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. The first murder. And abode not in the truth. Because there is what? No truth in him. Look now listen. If there's no truth in the devil. That means that. When there's truth in you, he hates you. If there's no truth, he is the enemy of truth. His job is to make you hate hearing truth. I'm up preaching Friday and folks covering their ears and getting up and leaving? Like you crazy. No, they're devils. They're with the devil. They don't want to hear the truth. Because there's no truth in you if the devil's in you. Amen. Bible says when he speaketh a lie, he's speaking of his own. He's speaking what's in his heart. In his old raggedy heart. For he is a liar. And the what? The father of it. I don't need my daddy to be the devil. I don't want my father to be the father of lies. Amen. That's why they got so mad when Jesus told them this. But he rebelled in heaven and was cast out because he betrayed God's trust. Isaiah 14 and 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. This is what he said he's going to do to him. Because of his rebellion. Now, to rebel in heaven is really, really strange. That's, and let me tell you what he was doing. And I feel like the Lord showed me this. 
He rebelled in heaven with a third of the angels. So basically, he knew he was going to lose. He knew he was going to be cast out. And he knew he would ultimately be cast into hell forever. But he found pleasure in watching the other angels fall with him. I know some dudes like that. They, they know what they're doing is wrong. They know they're going to get punished. But they still find pleasure in watching other people fall with them. You're doing it to see other people fall. Because you know you're going to fall. This same devil commands an army of demons that are seeking revenge against God. Demons seeking revenge against God. Now, I'm not giving demons power because they don't have power over you. So a demon can't make you do anything. Amen. When you see a person manifest the demon. And it's hand to hand, foot to foot, mouth to mouth where this demon is in their bodies, using their bodies to speak, using their bodies for different things. It's not the power of that demon that's doing that. It's the power of the will of the person that's doing it. I will preach in here. That person don't want to let go and has given that demon access. Demon ain't powerful. They come up to you and make noises and I just, you know, all of that's just smoke and mirrors. That's nothing. That's the person. So in, in my, you know, in my more mature days, nowadays, I learned, instead of me going up, what's your name? I'd be like, uh, whoever the person is, I'll call their name. Yeah. I said, brother, are you with me or against me? Yeah. Are you going to fight with me or are you with the demon? Amen. Because if you hit me or spit on me, security going to body slam you and, and it ain't going to be the demon that's going to be hurting. Because you ain't going to interrupt the service and stop everybody else from getting deliverance. That's what the boy was trying to do Friday night. He just bucking just like, oh, here you go. I was like, bro, keep that. Save that. That's a side show. There are people up here that want to be saved, delivered and set free. And that's a distraction. So you ain't gonna do that, you ain't interrupting the meeting. We're gonna take you out and deal with you in private. And it's so funny how demons change in private. When they're in public, it's just, ah, but in private. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no audience. There's nobody to clap. You can't show out in here. Amen. And you know, we don't know whether it's a demon or not in here, so we're just gonna treat it like an unruly person. So he's just going to drag you and whatever it is in you, whether there's something or not. We're dragging you out. And we'll deal with you in private, in the back. Amen. I would say it like Earl Carter said, but <laughs> he said, we either going to get the hell out of you or you going to. <laughs> but you don't let folks interrupt and mess up the when you're praying and 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 we're coming before the Lord and everything. We're not gonna let a person steal all the focus off God. That's a sideshow to stop the people from being blessed. Amen. The devil, that's his army. His army, he got an army full of crazy demons. Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness where? In high places. That's a whole legion and army of principalities and devils that are working for Satan. But they're not greater than God's. Amen. God has more. The Bible said a third of the angels fell. And though they tried to, 
procreate as many demons as they could before they got punished, they still can't compare to God's heavenly host. Look at somebody and say, God always has more. And you know what the beauty of it is, J. Bryant? God can make as many more as he want to make because he made the first group. I mean, it wasn't nothing for him to say a third of y'all just get on down to hell, go on and get under there, and I replace y'all. I made y'all, I'll make some more. But what he did, instead of just, maybe I won't make any more heavenly hosts, I'll just get in people. And the Bible said, one will put a thousand, two, ten thousand. We just, amen. Boy, y'all are Y'all don't know how to respond to good preaching. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. Yes. That was great. That, that was almost the argument going on that one. <laughs> they ought to be sitting there like they don't know. They don't know what to do. They don't. But <laughs> the devil knows he cannot defeat God. Do y'all believe the devil thinks he can really beat God? No. So he uses everything he has at his disposal to defeat man. Yeah. Remember in school, the bully wouldn't pick on the other bullies. He would never pick on anybody that could whip him. He'd look at him and try to size him up and he ain't bullying him. He gonna take the lunch money from the puny dude he know he can whip. Amen. And that's what the devil does. The devil, he comes after God's creation. He's not trying to fight God. He's trying to fight us. Because in the spirit, some of us are puny. Some of us are weak. Some of us are being bullied. So why would he fight God when he knows how much God loves us? He'll just fight us. Amen. You know that from gangster movies. When they want to get some, get a high-ranking official or something, they go kidnap the kid yeah. and hold them hostage and ask for ransom and use their love to do that. Well, the devil did the same thing, but he messed up because trying to hold us hostage, God gave us Jesus yeah. to set us free. Not only to set us free, but to empower us over him. So we would have power to rebuke his works. Cast him out. <laughs> Devil messing with the wrong folks. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job. Coming after people. He can't, he can't do these things to God. He does these things to us. Amen. Even though Jesus has already defeated him. He knows, the devil knows, that many are afraid of him and the demonic realm. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, don't be afraid. When demons manifest, demons, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Quit watching horror movies. Amen. Trying to get scared and going to a haunted house and Halloween is coming and you know that's what I do every year. I go to the haunted house. Why you want to be scared? There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with folks that like vampires. Why you like vampires and demons and ghouls and goblins? Why does that entertain you? Ah! Ooh, man. What? What's wrong with you? Schizophrenia. Why you got all the lights on? Because I'm scared. I thought you said you liked the movie. I did. What? You like living in fear. I don't watch all horror movies, even with the bad graphics. I don't want to see that. I don't see Blackula, Mama Waldy. He was scary for a lot of reasons. First, because he was black. I don't know black villain, monster. Look, somebody here. Oh, that was so racist. Yes! Candyman is the scariest one of them all. He was in the hood with a hook. Just some old Negro with a hook in the hood. And an old coat. Bees. Man, I 
Candy Messing Window. Candy Man! You know he'll whip Jason, Freddy, and Michael Myers. Ain't none of them touch Candy Man. Because Candy Man. Candy. Ain't nothing sweet about Candy Man. Man, that's the scariest movie I ever saw. That's scarier than The Exorcist. Candyman. He looked like somebody I know in my family. Oh, man. Oh, turn it off. Oh. <laughs> I can't even watch nothing he play in now. <laughs> he play. He playing in Lifetime movies, I can't watch it. That's just a husband, dog. No, that's Candyman. That's Candyman. Watch. Watch. Just watch. I'm traumatized. <laughs> and I've had friends of mine that worked at haunted houses that say, man, we hired 40 people, but Halloween night it was 50 and they're working. That's a true story. Extra folk working that didn't fill in an application? Where did they come from? He said it happens every year. Some of the stuff in there, they didn't plan. Some of the stuff they had no control over. Why you pay? You paid money to trust somebody to scare you to death. So the devil knows some folks are scared. That's why you're scared of demons. Because of what you've been watching on TV. What movies you've watched when you were young. You're scared of the demonic realm. And you don't think the devil knows you're scared? You're getting punked and bullied because of your fear of the demonic realm. Not understanding that our realm has more power than the demonic realm. Jesus came and left his power in our realm. And he left all power in our realm. All power in heaven and in earth and in every realm between the two is in Christ. And if Christ is in us, it's in us. Look at somebody and say, what you scared of? You scared of no demon. They don't have that kind of power. Colossians 2 and 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, trying, triumphing, triumphing. How do you say that? <laughs> triumphing. <laughs> I can't say it. Triumphing. 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 Let me start. Oh. And having small principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. <laughs> Triumphing over. This is the craziest church. All oh, these folk in here crazy. This is a crazy church. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Y'all, this is so funny. Oh, I love y'all so much. It's so good to be home. I'm telling you. His bluff has caused so many to live in fear, which leads to doubt and unbelief. So your fear of the demonic, demonic realm leads to doubt and unbelief. Remember when John spoke to us, that's what he said. He said doubt and unbelief, fear, doubt, and unbelief. The Lord was speaking to me the other day, Sean, but it's because people are scared of the demonic realm that they began to embrace doctrines against truth to eliminate the spirit realm. Yeah, there's some wonderful preachers. I, I mean, man, some of these guys I hold in high regard because of the things they've done. 
But they don't want to hear about no Genesis 6. They say Genesis 6. No, man, that's the sons of Seth. Sons of Seth that came in unto the daughters of Cain. It didn't have nothing to do with demons and Nephilim and none of that. I was like, wait a minute. Why are you canceling that part? Because if you cancel that out, you cancel demons out. And you never have to contend with demons. And the demons never contend with you. See, the demons ain't going to come out and bother somebody that's cool with them. Or that's not messing with them. Yeah, you speaking on their behalf. You, you in their corner. So you eliminate that part of the Bible. Because you have fear. You're afraid. I can't tell you how many pastors and preachers, me and my wife, I've had to yell in the microphone when I'm doing the altar calls and dealing with demons and stuff in their churches, and I'm looking for the preacher. Where the pastor? Somebody go get them. Maybe in the back, and they call about to start it up. <laughs> One of them was in the baptism. He was, what, he was on his way. You know, th this is the baptism he was. I said, Pastor! Oh, oh, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> you gonna hide in your old church? We had one pastor. <laughs> we were doing an altar call. Remember Will Ford? He was doing an altar call and we were looking for the pastor. That what? Where the pastor at? Hey! And he was in the back. Crossed <laughs> in the seats. And the cameraman walked by and put the camera on. He's like, oh, Lord. Here I am. My God. You can't eliminate a part of the Bible because you're scared. That makes... Amen. But his bluff has caused so many to live in fear, which leads to doubt then it leads to unbelief. Unbelief. Hebrews 3 and 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you a what? So God says that if there's a heart of unbelief in you, it's evil. Your heart is evil if you don't believe. And it'll manifest. It don't take you 20 minutes talking to a black Hebrew Israelite yeah. to find out that there's evil in his heart. Yeah. Yeah. In 20 minutes, you're going to be yelled at, yeah. cussed at, yeah. weak breath <laughs> might get you high. <laughs> and you're going to know that there's evil in that heart. By the way they quote the scripture at you, it's not even in love, it's, it's just... Dude, calm down. No! It says in Joshua. So, brother, I'm right here. Like, I'm right here. Can you tone it down a little? No! Yeah, that's unbelief. Unbelief in Jesus Christ as the only way. Amen. That Jesus has paid the penalty for the whole law. Uh-oh. Look, look around, y'all. Look around real quick. Who's clapping? Who's clapping? Who's not clapping? Did he pay it for the whole law? Was his death, burial, and resurrection adequate to cover the penalty of the whole law? Or do we have to keep some of it to qualify to see him? Or did he pay all of it? This church ain't filling up with foolishness. Amen. We don't need members like that. We, we, we don't have a tithe. We ain't got no billboard of me cheesing. We ain't trying to recruit folks. Folks tell me, brother, I just, I just feel like I need to come down there and join your church. Pray about it, bro. Talk to the Lord, then talk to him again, then talk to him again. Then talk to the Lord's friends, and then talk to the Lord again. Anybody trying to fill no church up with foolishness? I don't need no black Hebrew Israelites trying to uh, 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 hide in here and then spread that anger on everybody. We got white folks, black folks, Hispanic folks, Asian folks. We got all kind of folks. You ain't coming in here with that. 
that evil heart of unbelief. Can I preach in here? Jesus wants us to know that the devil is defeated. We should not be afraid of him. Look at somebody and say, don't be scared of the devil. We should not be afraid of him. James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and what? Oh, see, I need y'all to really read this. The Bible just said that we believe, thou believest that there is one God, and you're doing well when you believe that. But the devils also what? Believe. The devils also believe and what? Tremble. Yeah, so when you acting a fool and Cutting a rug in the club? Does, is there rugs in the club? <laughs> you cutting a rug in the club, dropping it like it's hot oh, no. to the latest Cardi B song, all of that, the devil's right there with you. He might be hitting you. Yeah, he dancing right with you. Every move. He ain't trembling. Yeah, but when you practice the righteousness of God, declare the word of God, live within the confines of God's expectations for you, devils tremble, tremble, tremble. Somebody come and cuss you out and you say, well, bless you and then just bless you. May, may God bless you. Tremble. But if you... Oh, that's all you got? <laughs> boop, boop, boop. He's a, the devil ain't trembling. He ain't trembling. Can I preach in here? Yeah. And you got to do right all the time. All the time. All the time. If you want the demons to tremble. Amen. I think I told this testimony before, but I'm going to tell it again. I never forget. Me and my wife were going to a restaurant. No, I don't think my wife was with me. We was going, I was with some people, I guess. We was going into this restaurant to eat. And in that restaurant, the women was in their panty drawers. What is that? The, the, the lingerie. I forgot what the name of the restaurant. And I didn't know. Was it Bone Daddy's? Well, Bone Daddy's, this is before Bone Daddy's change. They change now. Now their clothes just look like any old Friday night at the mall. But it used to be, they used to wear like lingerie. And so I was getting ready to go in there and I looked in there and I saw that and I said, oh no, I'm not gonna go out. So we were standing outside talking, thinking of, I guess somewhere else to go. Were you with me? Okay, my wife. So we thinking of somewhere else to go and the dude was coming out. And he said, G. Craig. And he saw me standing out there. He said, hey, man, I got your videos, blah, 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 blah. He said, you coming in there? I said, man, no. Nah. I said, man, I, I can't go in. I looked in there, and I said, I'm not going. He said, man, I guarantee you some preachers in there. I said, well, not this preacher. He said, man, he said, thank God for you. Thank God for you. Now, what if I had just been in there just <laughs> reveling? Bring me another whiskey. <laughs> yeah, you got to be saved. I'll look at somebody and say, all the time. All the time. Yeah, especially if you want demons to tremble. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Or you'll be the one trembling. Yeah, right. God is in control of our future. And what he started, he will finish. Yeah. The devil can't change God's mind. Okay, please hear this. I think in my lowest point of my life, I heard God tell me that. I prayed to the Lord and I said, God, is it over for me? And he said, I don't change my mind about you. Yeah, he said, I don't do that. 
And I said, well, Lord, why? Why? I saw you in the Old Testament. You changed your mind and you was going to kill everybody. And you didn't. He said, because of Jesus Christ. He said, I don't see what you see. I don't see you like the enemy sees you. I don't see you like your enemies see you. I don't see that. He said, I sent my son so I won't see that. And you got to be confident that God will not change his mind about what Jesus did for you. He's not going to change his mind. Folk can say what they want to say. They can hate what, how they want to hate. God ain't changing his mind. Philippians 1 and 6 says being confident. Look at somebody say confident. You got to be confident in this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day. When we are in Christ, we have nothing to fear and must stand strong under the protection of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13 and 6. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. 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 Summary. The devil is a liar. Look at somebody and say, the devil is a liar. He's a liar. When he tell the truth, he's lying. His truth is leading up to a lie. He'll mix the truth with the lie. He'll do whatever. He keeps telling you that your life is over and you need to give up on everything. Does he keep saying that to anybody in here? Your life is over. Give up on everything. Right? He uses the harsh words of others to cast doubt and fear in you to make you quit. Right? He wants you to quit. He does everything he can to keep you sinning and rejecting God's truth because he sinned and rejected the same truth. He wants you to stop believing in God. It's that simple. He wants you to stop believing in God. So that you will be like him. He wants you to create a situation in your life that makes your life harder so you will eventually quit and give in to him. The devil is sitting walking around trying to think of a way to get you in some kind of trouble, trouble that shifts your life, makes your life harder so you'll give up on God. Yeah, that's why when you down and out and when you low at your lowest point, you sin. Because the devil brings tempting things to cause you to sin, to make your life harder. Yeah. Yeah. I know ladies, I tell them, I said, man, get away from that dude. Get break up with him. Get away from him. I know I need to. I know I need to. Weeks later, pregnant. Now, you can't get away from it. Ever. The devil used that to make your life harder. You thought it was hard. And you made it harder. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. And then yet, uh, thank God for grace. Many of us in here wish we could turn back the hands of time and you can't. Wish we had Thanos' gauntlet so we could just dial on back and change some stuff. We don't get to do that. But we definitely, definitely don't want to give up on God. Amen? Amen? But listen to me. I feel like I'm speaking a warning to somebody. God has given you warning after warning after warning. The devil's trying to make your life harder. Create a situation.
to make it harder. So you will give up on God. This is why he wants you to sin and fall into his snare. But Jesus has already defeated the devil and made an open show of him. Amen. He's already defeated the devil, made an open show of him. He is a deceiver and can only deceive us into believing what he is saying. That's all he wants to do. Deceive you into believing what he's saying. You know, it don't take power in that case. He don't need power. The devil don't need power if you're going to believe what he's saying. He's going to use your power. Your power of the tongue. Your yard of the tongue. Yard is hand. Your hand of the tongue. To come out and create whatever you say. What do you need power for? When he can just make you say it. Yeah. Man, everybody hate me. Don't nobody love me. You said it. You said it. Wish I was dead. You said it. I don't want to be here no more. You said it. My life is over, man. I done messed it all up. You said it. You don't have the power to do anything you just said. But you have the power to say it and make it happen. You should never be afraid of the devil because he is afraid of you. Why are you afraid of the devil when he trembles at God's righteousness that's in you? The power of Jesus Christ in you destroys his works and defeats his plan against you. Yeah. So when he messes with one of your raggedy relatives and you come over he trembles because you might mess his plan up that he has for them. He know he can't mess with your plan, but he got them right where he want them. So he's waiting to see how you going to react. Are you going to go over there and dog them out and condemn them and make them feel bad? Or are you going to take the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ over there, offer hope to him and make the devil tremble? I know I'm preaching now. They just, you know. Some folk tired from the trip. If I ain't tired, you shouldn't be tired. If I can stand up here and preach, uh, hey, he's sitting up there sleeping. Oh, pastor, I'm the one that preached. <laughs> you asleep that Friday night? Uh, amen. <clears throat> yes. Yes, Lord. Yeah. But you should never be afraid of the devil because he's afraid of you. The power of Jesus Christ in you destroys his works and defeats his plan against you. He can't make you do anything. Did you hear what I just said? Don't you call me, come up here asking for prayer because you just keep doing the wrong thing. The devil ain't making you do that. You're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're so used to doing it that it's going to take getting caught to stop you. Boy, we, I didn't get no hand claps on that part. Yeah, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. He can't make you do anything. He can't stop you from doing anything. And most importantly, he can't keep you from what God has purposed for you. Who are we talking about? The devil can't do that. But if you believe what he's saying, you will do it to yourself. He can't do it. He can't make you do it. But if you believe what he's saying, you'll do it to yourself. Don't listen to the devil and never fear him. 
Amen. With Christ in us, we have power over every assignment of the enemy. Amen. Matthew 10 and 28. Fear not them which kill the body. Don't be afraid of earthly stuff, earthly things, and demonic realm things. Because they are not able to kill the soul. Amen. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. God gets upset when you're scared of the devil. When you're scared of demons and monsters and whatever, God gets upset. Because he said you should be scared of him. You should fear him. And you should stop watching monster movies. As a Christian. Hey Amen. You ought to have a cussing threshold in certain movies. They cussing too much. I got to turn this off. Hey Amen. I go look at the consumer thing that they say about a movie. If, they, if it says there's nudity and sex scenes in it, I ain't watching. Look at somebody. Wait. I mean, I ain't doing it. Technically. Well, the Bible says if you're watching it and liking what you see, you're doing it. The Bible calls that adultery. Yeah. No, oh, look at the hand claps. Yeah. You start in the R-rated movies and then work your way down. You, you don't care what the title is. You don't even care if folks said it was good. If it ain't rated R, you can't watch it. That's just not going to get my juices flowing. You have got a devil. Yeah! But then when it comes to spiritual warfare and casting devils out and everything like that, you scared. You scared of the wrong one. Amen. Amen. You need to be scared of the one that can destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Well, before you bow your heads, just fear of the demonic realm. We're going to cast that out now. So if that's you and you want courage when it comes to spiritual things and you tired of being timid to, and letting these things just be, you know, scary to you. We're going to believe God for you. That he's going to give you strength over it. You ain't scared of this stuff. I ain't scared of this stuff. I'm not scared of this stuff. I'm not going to be scared of this stuff. I'm going to sleep at night. I'm turning lights off. Before I go to bed, I'm yelling out in the name of Jesus. I'm calling his name. No night spirits. No night wives and husbands no incubus no succubus ain't nothing coming disturbing my sleep holding me down sleep paralysis wet dreams none of that stuff all that's got to go that's the, that's fear mongering that's the devil trying to make you afraid of something like he has real power he don't have power over you he don't have power over your body he don't have power over your mind all he has is what you've said so when you come to this altar today, say something else. Say the right thing. Declare the right thing over your life. I can declare it. I can pray it. I can throw all on all y'all, lay hands on you and knock you out, whatever. But until you say it and believe it, it's your tongue. It's your tongue. Your yard. The hand of your tongue. You got to declare it. So let's do that in here right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Everyone bow your heads. And just begin to declare it over your own life. Father God, in Jesus' name, I will not fear. I will not be afraid. Father God, I won't be afraid of what the devil is saying and doing. I won't be afraid, Father God, of the images and the, the, whatever he's doing to make me scared. Father God, I will not have fear. I will not have demonophobia. I won't be afraid of that realm because you've given me power and authority over it. So, Father, I use that authority to speak it right now over my own life. 
I speak life on my life. I call forth the life and purpose of God on my own life. All doubt, all fear, everything I've said and unbelief, I cancel it right now. Everything I said and repeated that was against your plan and purpose for me, I cancel it right now. Everything they said, the folks that said it and spoke it over me, that I was doomed, that it was over, that I'll never be nothing. All of those words fall to the ground right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, for speaking them. Forgive me, Lord, for repeating them. And Lord, forgive me for allowing them to take root in my heart. They are liars. The devil and them are liars. They were called to try to change my purpose in you, God. But I won't let it happen. I speak life. I speak purpose. I speak to myself. I declare it over myself. I don't care what my mama may have said, what my dad may have said, what an old boyfriend or girlfriend may have said, ex-husband, ex-wife may have said, wayward child may have said. Don't matter who said it, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus and I speak life. Life, Lord. Life over my life. Purpose over my life. The things of God over my life. Righteousness over my life. And I'll live for you, Lord. I'll live for you, Lord. I'll live for you. Give me that. Everyone just lift your hands. Father God, give me the courage, faith, confidence, and power to make demons tremble. Father God, that they would tremble when they know I'm around. Father God, give me that. I receive it right now. The anointing, the power of your Holy Ghost that devils will fear to mess with me they will fear to mess with my children they will fear to mess with my wife my husband father god give us that right now so that we will be your ambassadors to represent you and walk in your authority in this last hour father god make our feet footsteps sound like the steps of ten thousand men when we're walking in that realm father god gird us up with all of the weapons of your warfare give us what we need to enter that realm slay demons cast them out and keep moving in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Hug somebody and say, I'm not afraid. I won't be afraid of the terror by night. What's that song, PJ? How it go? I won't be afraid of the terror by night. Come on, let's sing it. I won't be afraid. Terror by night, the arrow out, I know your arrow first. I won't be. Come on, PJ, sing. The arrow by day, the arrow by night, the terror by night. Cause Jesus, I know you're with me. Let's I won't be afraid of the arrow by day. Oh, the terror by night.